So for this week's What What Wednesday question, we're going to talk about the question of why did you choose the car you did as your tow vehicle behind your RV? What What? So this is our uh, 2007 Subaru Forester behind us. <laughs> it was not our first vehicle we bought to tow behind the RV. We don't talk about this a lot. It's a very uh, it's a touchy subject. I've made a lot of mistakes. This one's this one's up there. <laughs> when we decided to sell our fifth wheel and go for the motorhome, one of the deciding factors for me was when Nathan told me that we could tow a Jeep, which is my all-time favorite vehicle. Always wanted one. <laughs> so as soon as I heard the word Jeep, I was sold. <laughs> so um, not just any Jeep. She wanted a four-door Jeep, uh, which behind a gas motorhome. But I mean, I looked at the specs. It was under 5,000 pounds. It was supposed to be able to tow it. Um, so I went and got a Jeep, and I assumed you see these Jeeps all over the place. I assume that you get a, you know, get a Jeep, you're good to go. Um, but turns out there's um, a Jeep that most people don't buy that I bought. <laughs> like, like I think 90% of the Jeeps do not fall into this category. So what you don't want to buy if you're getting a Jeep, by the way, do not get an automatic two-wheel drive. It could be automatic four-wheel drive. It could be a manual two-wheel two -wheel drive. drive. Um, all it can't be is an automatic two-wheel drive. <laughs> And that's what I bought. <laughs> so I'd bought the Jeep, taken it to the place to get the base plate put on it and everything. And if you've ever done that, it's not cheap. You have to buy the base plate and pay for the labor. I mean, you can try to do it yourselves, but I just didn't want to chance it. So, uh, but anyways, he was wrapping it up and I was thinking, well, how do you put the Jeep into you know tow mode? You have to like disengage the drive shaft somehow. And I looked and mine did not, our Jeep did not have that. <laughs> so it could not, uh, disengage the drive shaft and so you don't want to pull an automatic that can't disengage that drive shaft because you're it's going to overheat your transmission but we were leaving for our trip to florida in like <laughs> two days and Marissa, she didn't tell me this but her look said this that i will kill you <laughs> if we did not leave for this trip and take this jeep so we took the jeep to our trip you know we did a i don't know what four or six week loop through florida and some other places and i got on my back and manually disengaged that drive shaft the entire trip. So six, <laughs> eight, ten times. I don't know how many times. I had to get on my back, unhook the drive shaft, tie it up. We got to where we're going. I'd get back on my back, take the drive shaft off, retie it up. But uh So learn from us. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh get the right Jeep. So uh yeah. one of one of the best places I found if and again this I don't know that other than going straight to the manufacturer, looking at the manual with your own eyes for your exact model, um, there's a surefire way to know what it does. But one of the best places I've found that is quick to do a quick scan, uh, if you just do a search for Remco Towing, uh, they'll tell you and put in your vehicle specs, it'll tell you whether or not your vehicle can be towed um, the way it is, whether or not you can add a pump to it that'll keep it, make it towable, or you can add what's called a drive shaft disconnect. I don't get too geeky with all this stuff. But anyways, <laughs> Remco towing, make sure you research it. Do not buy the wrong thing. So our second time around, um, which this is not a Jeep. So <laughs> our second time around. I think I got suckered on that deal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We... <sighs> Well, the Jeep towed okay behind the RV, but it was about 4,500 pounds. And, uh, cause it's got, it had, I mean, she loved it. It, it was, it was, had a, what, a three inch, four inch lift on it. <laughs> it had like a three inch lift on it. It had the big mud tires on it. Um, so it looked really cool, but as far as towing it behind an RV and something that you want a good mileage with. A nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It was not your ideal towing vehicle. Uh, at least not for a gas RV like what we have. So round two, um, I started looking at three different things. Um, I looked, I looked at Subarus. Uh, I looked at the Honda CRV, and I looked at the Saturn View. Um, but we ended up, and I looked at a lot of other stuff too. But we ended up, I found this Subaru about four hours away from us in Atlanta. It's a manual transmission, and so you might be thinking, well, where am I going to find one of those? Well, let me tell you this: if you can find one of those, especially in a big city, they may give the thing away because people, <laughs> <laughs> people do not enjoy driving manual transmissions for the most part in cities because it's stop and go and it's wearing out, just wearing you out driving that thing in big cities. So I found somebody in Atlanta that had been trying to drive, sell this thing forever and uh, we got a really good deal on the Subaru uh, with the standard transmission. So that's the good news if you can drive it. <laughs> and I looked up, she can drive a standard transmission. So my dad always told us that it was a good thing to know. So I guess that did come in handy. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, he did not show her how to drive a 40 foot RV, but that would not be expected. <laughs> <laughs> Things we love about the Subaru, um, we love that it's all-wheel drive. That was something that was important to us if we wanted to go off-roading or um, do some fun things like that. Um, it gets really good gas mileage. The ga gas mileage is, I mean, it's better than a Jeep. I hate to... <laughs> <laughs> it's almost double what the Jeep would get. <laughs> it's got tons of cargo space in the back. We have a pretty large stroller, and then we have her box seat, and her carrier we've got a lot of stuff so we needed something that that could fit all of our toddler gadgets and it had that as far as the weight of the subaru uh, the honda crv and the saturn view i mean these are general numbers but they were around 3500 pounds the subaru was only 3000 so i loved getting instead of a 4500 pound jeep having a 3000 pound vehicle behind us unfortunately the subaru doesn't the top doesn't come off the subaru but it is a lot easier to tow and it has a lot more advantages in some other areas than what the Jeep had. So that's where we've settled. We like it. It's not to say we would never tow a Jeep again. Um, you'll see probably more Jeeps. Um, there's, I don't know, probably eight people in our loop right now where we're staying. <laughs> and I think two or three of them have four door Jeeps. So <laughs> you're going to, you see a lot of Jeeps out there for a reason. They are great towable vehicles, but the Subaru is a good one too. We've had no issues. You don't have to do anything special with it. Unhooking the battery or mess with anything. You just put it in neutral, make sure the parking brake's not on, uh, put the key in the AC position. It just goes other than it not taking the top off of it and being a Jeep. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. it's been a very logical choice. It has, it's, it's much more economical <laughs> friendly i guess that was hard for me to admit <laughs> so that's why we chose our tow vehicle um like i said there's lots of other options out there but just don't be like me <laughs> do, do, do your research you did a lot of research well i did that's the thing that's what's really sad i do a lot of research and i still make mistakes <laughs> so <laughs> do even more research than you think you need to do that's why we ended up with our Subaru. So um, if you have any questions or comments, let us know.